Welcome to Washoe County Library's Wild Wednesdays with Conservation Ambassadors Wild Things. We have Gabe here. Scott, Gabe. Who do I have? This is Archimedes. This is a great horned owl. Isn't he magnificent? Beautiful. I think so. beautiful. It's, uh, this guy here, he actually came to our center over 20 years ago um, through UC Davis Raptor Center. And he was, he was hit by a car and he has an injury to his wing on this side, his left wing. And can fly a little bit, but just can't fly enough to go back out in the wild. And that's why he's here at the center. And he's been traveling to school groups ever since. He is absolutely beautiful. I think so too. If you look at the plumage, the feathering, the, the, the white and the tan and the gray, especially on his back, just absolutely gorgeous coloration. You take these colors and you put them up against the bark of our native oak trees. Yeah, you just don't see him. He blends in that perfectly. It's just beautiful, beautiful camouflage. I think, look at those talons on the, on the glove. Incredible talon strength. And one thing you'll notice about with the owls, if you look at the owl's feet, they're covered with plumage, covered with feathering. That's part of his stealth. That's part of as he flies, he wants to fly quiet so that he can listen for mice and rats and, and small creatures down there in the leaf litter. So I'll, I'll have him flap his wings you can listen to his wings, it's, it's whisper quiet. It's a three foot wingspan, making hardly any sound. Listen to this. Pretty cool. Like he's, he's huffing and puffing, but his wings are making hardly any sound at all. I think it's just so amazing. So they fly quiet and they're able to pinpoint exactly where that mouse is or exactly where that rat is. Their ears are cool. One ear is up here, almost on top of the head. And this ear is down low on the, on the right side. They're offset. Then they have the sound collection dish of a face. So as sound travels in and having offset ears, they can pinpoint where the noise is coming from. Uh, biologists think that even without any sight at all, it still would get a generally good reading on where their prey was just from the sound. I think it's just amazing. Speaking of sound, his noise, he has that typical, that typical hooting sound. It's kind of Yes, that's the sound. I want, one thing everybody always wants to learn about is the, the turning of the head almost all the way around. Everyone wants to talk about the spinning of the, of the head all the way around. And you can see he can rotate that head pretty well. It's, uh, he can turn that thing, oh, he's gonna be looking at me. But he can turn almost one rotation all the way around. They have nine neck bones, nine little tiny bones giving him flexibility from side to side. It's very necessary because their eyes are stuck in one position. Their eyes, their eyes don't shift, so the head has to shift. That's why he has a very, very, very flexible neck. But something I always like to talk about is people always say, oh, owls can turn their heads almost all the way around. Well, actually, all birds can do this. It's just a bird trait. Uh, the chicken, our, our chickens sleep with their head tucked under their wing on their back. We, we've had an ostrich here who would turn his head all the way around and flip it upside down, which is, which is particularly fun to, <laughs> funny to look at. Huh. That's we have good no to idea. I was actually going to ask the question about his head. Um, uh -huh. We have a question from Facebook. They want to know why you're wearing a glove. Oh, look at those talons. Amazing talent strength. Now, he's very gentle with them. He's been handled a lot. He's, he's used to being on the glove. But if he were to become frightened, and did what's called footing, where he grabs down with all of his talent strength. Even though he's not a very large bird, that could go right down through the flesh, all the way down to my bone. Very, very powerful talents. And I said he's not a very large bird. He might look big, especially when he spreads his wings. But this bird only weighs a pound and a half. One and a half pounds, that's it. They're hollow bones, lightweight feathers. Look at that. Look how my fingers just kind of disappeared into the bird's body. Kind of cool. Cool. And his name again, somebody asked? Archimedes. And what does Archimedes eat? Oh, in the wild or in captivity? I'll answer both. Okay. In, in the wild, they eat mice and rats and gophers, opossum, even animals up to the size of a skunk. They're actually very, very powerful predators. Even though they're only a pound and a half, they could, they could kill and eat a skunk. They wouldn't eat the whole skunk in one sitting, but they could make a very, very good meal out of it. In captivity, he gets mostly mice. And kind of needs to, when he eats a mouse, he doesn't tear it up. 
he grabs on the mouse, he swallows it down completely whole, and then about, oh, about five hours later, he kind of shakes up and down, shakes it down, and he burps up a package. It's fur and bones and teeth. It's cast back out their beaks. It's called an owl pellet. It's all the rough stuff. They don't send that body through, the, that, that through their body the other way. They cast it back out their beaks. Rather a unique digestive system. I always like to say, I'm, I'm really glad we don't do it. <laughs> right? It would be kind of uh, gross. You go to In-N-Out Burger. No. <laughs> no. And uh, Archimedes is nocturnal animal, correct? For birds. That is correct. There are several diurnal owls. There are several owls that are up during the daytime, um, like the burrowing owls. But this one here is a dead of night hunter. He likes to hunt when it's really, really dark. Is, and what breed or what type of owl again? The great horned owl. They're called the great horned owl because they're big. And look at these feather tufts on top of his head. Do those look a little bit like horns? They do. Yeah, they're, they're not horns, so they're just feathers. And when he's angry, he'll push them all the way forward. He'll fluff himself up, try this little sort of dance, try to chase other animals away. Clacks his beak, makes him look really big and tough. Hey, do owls all always have yellow eyes like this, or not all of them do? But several several species have strikingly yellow eyes, but not owl eyes. Not all owls. That's very hard to say. Not all owls have yellow eyes. Well, he is absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you're just joining us, we are here for our Wild Wednesdays with Conservation Ambassador Wild Thing Ambassadors Wild Things. Um, I'm filling in for Beate. My name is Morgan, and we have Gabe here. Gabe, can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Sure. Wild Things, well, Conservation Ambassadors is a, is a group of wildlife rescue centers here in California. And what we at Wild Things do at Conservation Ambassadors is we give a home to wild animals that need help, whether those are animals that have been injured, like this guy, animals that have been injured and can't go free back out in the wild, or wild animals that people have tried to keep illegally as pets. We have a great big problem uh, in terms of illegal wildlife here in the United States. Well, those animals are taken away, they're sent to our center as well. What we normally do is travel to school groups and speak to school kids about wildlife and the environment, and conservation topics. But other than that, with the pandemic, it's a little bit more difficult. We, we do a lot of library programs in the summer and they're some of my favorite programs. Unfortunately, this year, we've done a lot of live um, Facebook and, and Zoom um, virtual programs. Well, it's my absolute favorite one, and I'm so glad that we're able to bring this to everyone this summer. Um, again, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat, um, and we can ask as we go along. Um, just one comment, they said that he is um, beautiful, looks like a zebra with his feathers that have stripes like that. Oh, and then there that's was, an interesting thought. They go the wrong way, though. No, I'm just kidding. That's a... <laughs> um, are they solitary birds or do they live with an owl family? They, well, they, they pair bond up. So if the, the, the male and the female will guard the nest and the nest site and they'll pair bond up and stay there for several seasons. They're not talked about like the bald eagle in terms of bonding forever, and, uh, but they do pair bond up and you will see pairs of owls. Once the youngsters fledge, and leave the, the nest after they hatch and they get feathers and they start to pop and then they can finally fly. After they fledge, they're trying to kind of chase off. They're off on their own. Well, Archimedes is absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a cool sound. His, his hoot is the one that you'll, you'll hear it, it, in the dark of night. You'll hear that beautiful, that kind of and you'll hear other owls answering back, marking the territory, calling the territory. Do you guys see that little membrane that goes across his eyes? He has a pair of flying goggles. It's a clear nictating membrane that goes across his eye. And that way, when, ooh, that way when he is flying, he doesn't get dirt and debris in his eyes. Well, uh, no, very serious. He is very serious and staying very still. Someone wondered why he was staying so still. Well, he's been going to school programs for a long time, and he's very comfortable on my fist. But I can have him flap his wings for you, and this is a big secret. Yeah. Or, or first, I'll do it, and I'll tell you how I do it. Okay, ready? Let's have you wave. Big wave. You know how I'm getting him to do that? 
kind of tricky. It's almost like a branch. If my hand turns, it's like a branch blowing in the wind. So he has to balance himself a little bit. So that's kind of a little owl hand and wing secret. Uh, yeah, little boy. He is beautiful. Okay. Well, should I put him back? Sure. You got something else for us today? Well, we have the main animal for today. We have the one that you requested. Your Personally. favorite animal. <laughs> It'll take me just a second to go get him. So um, sure. to get her, we brought the girl. And her name is Miss Piggy. You guys are about mm -hmm. to meet Miss Piggy, one of my favorite animals to share. All right? I can't wait. I might be out of breath when I get back. Oh, uh. so anybody, cool? <laughs> anybody who comes to my toddler times knows that these are just not my favorite. So convince me. Oh, fantastic. It would be my pleasure. This is, this is Miss Piggy. And when I, when I said, isn't she cool? That's a reptile joke because they're cold blooded. Isn't she? No. Anyways, oh, that was a funny joke. Anyways, <laughs> this is a Burmese python, one of the coolest snakes on the planet. This is, they're found in India, and this is one of the largest constrictors, one of the largest snakes. Right now, Miss Piggy's right about 100 pounds. She weighs right about 100 pounds. She's about oh, 13 to 15 feet in length, and she's not done growing. She's gonna eat and eat and grow and grow. One day, she'll be twice the snake you see inside of, that you see in front of you right now, one of the largest snakes on the planet. Now, first thing that people always ask me is, Gabe, is she venomous? And the answer is no, she's not venomous. And do you know how you can tell she's not venomous? I actually, I do because of oh, my well, irrational my, fears. What I was gonna say was it's because I'm holding her. Oh, yeah. that's another good dad <laughs> joke you got going on there. It's, it's, it's all I have, but I'm trying. That actually you can say by the shape of the head that they don't have that diamond or triangular shaped head. Now she's a constrictor. She kills by squeezing. What she does, she flips her tongue. She sits that tongue out, she grabs a little piece of air. She brings the air back in the roof of her mouth, right up in here. She has a very special center. It's called a Jacobson's organ. A special spot. She touches her tongue, and she can tell what's happening in the world around her. She is actively reaching out, grabbing air, bringing that air back in the roof of her mouth, touching that Jacobson's organ, and she can tell what's happening in her area. Now she sits there, and she sits really still, flicking her tongue. And when a, an animal gets too close, whether that's a mouse or a rat or a rabbit or where she lives, even some small antelope and whatnot, she strikes. And in her mouth, she has over 50 teeth. Very sharp teeth, all pointing back. So she grabs on her prey, she wraps around, and she squeezes. She kills by squeezing. When an animal's deceased, she opens her mouth really wide, and she starts to swallow. This is something I think is so totally cool. When she's swallowing, it takes her a while. She doesn't, have, she doesn't have hands to push it into it. So she's just wiggling the jaws back and forth. She has to breathe. So what happens is her trachea, her windpipe, sticks out to the side like a little snorkel so she can breathe while she's swallowing. It's pretty cool. Then she swallows it down, and then muscles take over to push like a wave. Push that rabbit or whatever she's eating down into this section. You know what's in here? That's her stomach. Yeah, big long stomach. She she's not just a head and a tail. This is she has lungs and she has a heart and she has a it's a really cool heart. We'll talk about that. But she has this this big long stomach and it, and the bump sits there for four or five maybe six days. And then four or five maybe six days after she eats the waist, it's pushed down here to this end. This is what we call the dangerous end of the snake. This is where they go to the bathroom. And you know what? She goes to the bathroom. And with her, she eats one big meal a month. That's it. She goes to the bathroom once a month. A very, very simple life. Leaves a lot of time for doing stuff around the house and getting her yeah. work done. Reading library books. Now, um, Miss Piggy, she is absolutely gorgeous right now. She just shed her skin. She sheds her skin in one piece. Such a cool process. She gets really itchy. She soaks in the water. Then she rubs, and then she soaks, then she rubs. And finally, this whole upper layer separates from the skin underneath it, almost like there's airspace in there, and it peels off her body like a sock, like she's taking off a sock. It's kind of, it's kind of rolled up inside out, and she goes off to her world in beautiful new skin. This snake sheds her skin about four times every year. You and I, 
as humans, we shed our skin about four times a year as well. Only little tiny particulation, little tiny pieces. It doesn't come off in one piece. Speaking of skin, under here, this, these are called scoops. Very, they're almost like the bottom of a tank or a tractor, and they give the, the tread as she's moving along, and they give her, give, her, give her traction. She wants to move fast. She doesn't move like a small snake. She doesn't go in the serpentine or the S motion. The big snakes, they move in a straight line. It's called rectilinear motion. They, they kind of push their, their muscles like a wave, and they move along a straight line, and you know how fast she does? She moves about as fast as we walk. That's it. Not very, very fast at all. Um, rather slow body creatures. Now the heart, about a third of the way down on the underside, this is where you'll find the heart. And her heart is weird. Her heart is three chambers. Um, whereas ours has four sections, the snakes only three. And it makes a really weird rhythm. Doesn't uh, make sense, but I guess it works, it works for the snakes. This snake, is a snake that has been in the past, has been sold in pet stores. And gosh, what a terrible idea. It's awful. I, I'm, I love snakes. And I got my first pet snake when I was in second grade. And I had that snake all the way to college. And I would never discourage kids from being interested in reptiles, but there are good choices and there are terrible choices. The good choices are bearded dragons and corn snakes, the big burmies, pythons, and anacondas, and boas, terrible choice. We get a lot of big snakes like this at our rescue center every month that people grow tired of. Speaking of growing tired of snakes, we're having a problem with this snake in, the, in Florida. Here in the United States, we have Burmese pythons living in the wild in Florida. And it's a huge, huge problem. They're not supposed to be there. The people let them go free into the swamps, and now they're eating up a lot of the eggs from the birds that are supposed to live there, and some of the reptiles that are supposed to live there. So another example of how animals should be left where animals are and not moved by man from one place to the next. That just messes up the natural world. Natural right. world. Somebody one, says that you hmm. might need a bigger table. She's so big. I you know, said she'll get bigger? I wish you could see her when she's all the way stretched out. Right now, this is an eight-foot table, so... Um, it, when she's all the way stretched out, you really see the length and the, the size of the animal. She's, um, but like I said, she's not been growing. She's, we're, we're feeding her, keeping her nice and, nice and thick and healthy and happy, but um, we're not making her grow too much because she's already a lot to carry around. Do you know that uh, people always talk about slimy snakes, their skin? It's really a terrible misnomer. Her skin does have a shine to it. It looks beautiful, but it's actually very, very smooth and very, very dry. I think it's, it feels like a very smooth um, orange. And it's cold. It's cold. It, snakes are cold-blooded creatures. They're ectothermic, cold-blooded. So she is the same temperature as this room. She is the same temperature as the table upon which she's laying. She doesn't have inside body temperature like we do. Well, she is beautiful. Um, somebody's asking how long till she is, until she is full, fully grown. Very good question. Snakes are never, ever full grown. They grow their entire life cycle. It slows down as they get older, but they're still growing. So the, 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 the correct answer is she's never fully grown. She can always get a little bit bigger. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know but, that. But that being said, this is an adult snake that is big enough to have a family, big enough to have territory um, all to herself. And she likes being handled? She, you know, that's a, she appreciates being handled a certain way. She doesn't ever become aggressive or not eat or anything like that. But in terms of liking, I don't think it's like my dog. It would, you know, it, it, it would be neat if she would say, hey, Gabe, it's you. Yay, hi. But for her, it's not how she interacts with her environment. Um, she puts up with us and she's very non-aggressive, but I don't think she truly likes it. I think she'd rather be in her pond um, waiting for something to eat, waiting for something to, uh, for her opportunity to feed herself. And tell us again, how old is Miss Piggy? Um, in her 20s, somewhere in her 20s. Um, she's, she came to us, she was uh, somebody I had in a school and she got to be so large that the school said, no, there was a science teacher that had her 
And the principal said, no, you need to find a new home for that snake. And the, the gal, the teacher, still visits her on a regular basis. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. Yeah. So, and how know, long will she live? Oh, they can live 40 years. Wow. So a lot of times people are nervous about snakes like this. And a lot of times people are nervous about animals like bats or maybe nervous about spiders. I, over all the years of doing this, I think the more we learn about the animals, a lot of that fear just kind of goes away. It's, it's one of those things where if you, you have a little, if you're a little bit nervous about something, read about it, learn about it, go to the library, get some of the books about that creature, and I think you'll, you'll lose a lot of that fear. I think we're, we're fearful of what we don't understand. Um, I know it works for me. So. I agree, and I feel a lot better after all of this information you've given us, for sure. Um, I have a question, then there's another question that came through Facebook is, do they lay eggs or do they have live babies? That's a very good question. This, this one here is an egg layer, but some snakes lay eggs, some snakes have live birth, and oh. some snakes have eggs inside their body that hatch inside the body and then they give live birth. So they're, wow. they got all the bases covered. Wow. See, that's a good piece of information I didn't know. That's, that's um, somebody else had mentioned, because you asked um, how we knew she was venomous, but somebody mentioned that she doesn't have bright colored skin. Is that right. always an indication? Not always. No, rattlesnakes are very dull grays and browns and whatnot, but the, the, the point is well received. It's a good thought. A lot of venomous creatures, a lot of animals that are poisonous to eat, like some frogs, have bright colors to warn other animals, hey, hey, I'm, I'm venomous or I'm poisonous, you best leave me alone. So that's a really good thought. Well, she's so beautiful. You've got interest in holding her, so we'll have to get back to live presentation someday, I know. Yeah, you know what I'd love to do is, well, first, at the end of every live presentation with her, the kids get a chance to come up, or even the big kids in the audience get a chance to come up and feel the skin, feel just the, the musculature and how strong she is and, and how beautiful the skin is. Um, but also when we're displaying her, I want to get about eight kids out of the audience, put their arms out like this, and just lay her across their arms, and everybody helps to hold up the snake. Um, really pretty cool. Do you think I can stretch her out a little bit to show how big she is? This is just you can really see. Kind of, look at that. Now she's, whoa! You can see it. She's very long. This very first. long. Little. Wow. So that, that it's very, very important to me that, that people that love snakes understand the, the question of what snakes are, are appropriate to, to keep as pets, even though it might, might not be an illegal animal. Um, it's really not a good choice. The ones that I like to tell people are the ones that are going to be well cared for, well provided for, that aren't going to hurt somebody. This is a, as nice as she is. She's a big, powerful animal. She could hurt somebody and animals that are not taken out of the wild, animals that are ready for captivity. So we're not depleting the wild numbers of the animals that we, we love so much. Um, so how big are eggs or are snake eggs for a snake her size? How big? Yeah. Her, her like. eggs will be the size of, an, of a chicken egg, but soft and leathery. Huh. Interesting. Very, and how they're did... not hard and calcified, it's a soft leathery skin. How did Miss Piggy get her name? I'm not sure exactly, but we think it has something to do with how big she got uh, and how she ate. Uh, that's a good question. It's a silly name for a Burmese python. Well, as big as she is, it does make sense. She's beautiful. So the skin used to get them in a lot of trouble. They, a lot of these snakes were killed for their skin to make boots and belts and wallets and purses and whatnot, and it is a gorgeous skin, but in today's world, I think, where you can make the same texture, same coloration with fake leather, I don't think there's any real reason to take the wild animals. And luckily, skins and furs have really lost their appeal. I don't think that many people are looking to wear, you know, the parts of animals any longer, which I think is great. The, um, in India, we are still seeing these snakes, and they're doing okay, they're doing okay in the wild. Yep, as big as she is, is one thing I find amazing. And in an area the size of this table, in her natural habitat, you can't see her. 
She is so well camouflaged. This coloration is perfect. Just in kind of a wetlands area, she blends in. I should talk about that. She's a great swimmer. She, she is from the swamps. She can stay underwater for hours at a time without taking a breath of air. And, and she loves to, I mean, she has a pretty heavy body. So when she gets in the water, that kind of um, takes a lot of that load off of her body. Um, she's very buoyant. Do most snakes swim? Yes. All snakes can swim. Um, the, the smooth skinned snakes are the ones that you see mostly in areas where there's a lot of moisture. And like the water, like in this area, you see the garter snakes and the racers that are in where there's a little bit more um, water. And the gopher snakes and the rattlesnakes with the more bumpy skin, you'll see them in the, in the drier areas. Their scales aren't tight. Like this. These scales are very, very tight to keep moisture out of the bottom. And all snakes can swim. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you showing her to us. I am going to do more research to help my- Can I show, can I show you one thing that's kind of weird? I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay, down here on the tail. Right here, this is where she goes to the bathroom. But on the sides, right there and right there, there's a little toenail. And those, it's called a spur. And those toenails, those little pieces of bone that stick out are actually her back legs. Snakes have back legs. They're just underneath the skin layer. So that's one of those things that people say, well, snakes don't have legs. They do. It's just they don't need them, and they're just underneath the hot, underneath the skin. Well, Pretty you cool. affected me because I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking, are snakes related to eels at all? Um, no. But that's it. They're, they've adapted very similarly. That um, this, these, this is a reptile, and... Um, uh, but they're, they're, they're adapted along the same line, same sort of locomotion, the way they move, especially the aquatic snakes and the eels. Um, and somebody wanted to know, does Miss Piggy sleep curled up? Yes. And but her, her, she suns herself out in a straight line, just getting her body out there as much as she can. The sun is very important to her. But when she's sleeping, she coils herself up and she wraps up in an area, oh, just about this big, that's it. And usually she has her head in a spot where she can pull it back to protect it should a predator arise. She can just pull her head back from underneath another part of her body to protect her vital organs in her head. So that, that leads into a really good question somebody had is what animals do snakes have to worry about attacking them in the wild? Yeah, the cats, you know, the bigger cats, like where she lives, there are tigers and leopards. And she also has to worry about members of the crocodile family, that live the gharials and the, um, the big mugger crocodiles that live in India. They eat a lot of the pythons and other snakes. So. Wow. I can't imagine a snake big enough to eat something the size well, of this. Well, this big at this size is kind of at the top <laughs> of the food chain. Uh, most of the animals leave for a lot of us. It's a really hungry leopard. Somebody, somebody else made a really good joke for you. So basically, okay, she has. To, they said basically she has to worry about the other animals we've had so far. That's right. That's. Uh, He's gorgeous. One thing that uh, I think you might notice if you look at her face really closely, can you guys see her eyes? See how the eyes are right along the line, the dark marking. That's an ad adaptation to camouflage her eyes. Her eyes are right, always, all the Burmese pythons, they have these stripes, but the eyes are along the dark spots, so the eyes blend in. So the animals can't see the eyes. Pretty cool. <laughs> she's very, very, very strong. Right now she's being very gentle, just slowly moving. But if she were to wrap around, incredibly powerful. Just, you know, like right now, she's pushing my hand. It's just, that's just sheer muscle. And any kind, of, what kind, do they have a skeletal system as well, I assume? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a vertebrate. So she has a very long backbone. She has a set of ribs, almost every centimeter down her body. And each one of those ribs is connected to over four muscles. So that's what gives her that strength. But that's a mean set of dumbbells that she has to use. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the jokes. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave them to you. 
Well, Gabe, I don't have any other questions. She is absolutely beautiful. And again, thank you so much for what your organization does and just even sharing all of your beautiful well, Thank energy. you, thank you very much. And um, the thing I always like to stress, one, I, I think they're beautiful, but I'm not advocating that they be in ownership situation, a pet situation. Um, if somebody's really interested in reptiles, I think they should study science and maybe get a job studying the reptiles out there in the wild where they truly belong. And also, everybody has to get involved doing things to save animals, recycling, keeping the environment clean, not wasting water, um, not using plastics, you know, single-use plastics, simple things, and wild animals will do great alongside of us. And I think that's uh, the message that this, the animals would like to get out there is to, hey, everybody do your part. So. Wonderful. Any, um, so we are going to, this is going on every Wednesday through the month of July at 2 o'clock. Do you want to... We moved, we hinted last week, but we're moving oh, we that one to oh, next me, week. Can I hint, can I hint what's going to yeah, be on this free week? Okay. The animal with the coolest song is going to be on next Wednesday from Australia. The animal that we've heard about because we sing a song, especially kids sing this song. And the bird, oh, give it away. It's a bird, baby, um, will make the coolest noise. That, and we'll also have a special guest on it as well. So. Wonderful. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, again, thanks to friends of Washoe County Library. If you want more information about beautiful reptiles, you can visit our website, washoecountylibrary.us. Thanks again. Enjoy your summer reading adventure. Yay. Thank you very much for having us.